Hello, everyone, and welcome back to For the Minions, the weekly show where we talk about some of the spiritual successors to Paragon. We're going to change things up this time. Well, I thought we were going to change things up. We're going to move the news and updates around to the most significant news and updates instead of alphabetical order, but it ends up they went in pretty much the exact same order. But anyway, I am your host, the one and only Mangoose. Joining me, as always, is Mandy Mal. How you doing, Mandy? I'm doing pretty good, and we have another returning special guest with us, Jackal. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty darn tootin'. How are you? <laughs> pretty darn tootin'. I like it. <laughs> so Jackal, a little bit of history about yourself for the people that don't know. And uh, we all know that your your favorite hero was Gideon. But <laughs> uh, Well, I, don't know, I just uh, started all the way back in Legacy days. I played quite a few games of Gideon. But uh, Gideon wasn't my main back then. I used to play a lot of Murdoch. I have a couple videos on my channel. Uh, I have a Murdoch video from way back in Legacy. Oh, yeah? Uh, pretty cringe, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I like to go back and watch the Legacy days. I'll tell you what, you're but, never as good as you think you were. I, I go back and look at some of my <laughs> clips like, oh, this clip is so awesome. And then I look at it, I'm like, that was that was just me killing a person. <laughs> that like, wasn't even good. Yeah, I even like edited some like arrow in to show like a perfectly placed mine that he threw down. It was, it was a good time. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Good old Murdoch. So let's uh let's move on into the news and updates. And like I said, it's going to go in the same order as it used to. Uh, starting off with MetaBuff. Uh, if you saw the the video I put out this week, I was talking about how they lost some of their programmers. Um, speaking to them, they said that they have already replaced those programmers. So that's good. And um, what's even better is I've been I've been talking to the programmers that left. Um, well, I've been talking to Arsenic, the lead programmer that left and uh he says that they are they're not gonna they're not gonna try and keep any of the code or anything they're gonna leave uh all the work that they've they've already done there with meta buff so core did not lose any progress in this uh little uh little debacle this little i don't know period of badness i don't know what you want to call it but um i did i did want to get the the programmer side of the story in case people cared i mean as far as as far as I care about, I really care about the effect more than the cause. Like, I want to know how it's going to affect the progress of the game. And it looks like it's not going to affect it too, too much. I mean, they did lose some experienced programmers. But um, I know a lot of people are probably curious about this. And I know I, I kind of gave... I gave them, I gave the programmers that left a more of a bad rap than I wanted to in that video. I didn't script that video, so I didn't make the point that I really wanted to make, which was there's always two sides to every story. And uh, so I got the second side of the story. And uh, so in case anybody's wondering, um, yeah, there, there was, there were uh, the programmers that left. They did, they did leave over money. Um, you can call it greed if you want, but they, um, it seems like. They were just some pretty young kids that when they got there to Meta Buff and Core, they were offered um, what was kind of a low, low ball amount for what they were doing. They were offered uh, like 1% of, of the of, of 1% shares, which is fine if you're also getting paid a salary, but they weren't. And um, so they just didn't want other people to be benefiting from all of their hard work and uh they just wanted fair compensation for the work that they did so i think that's i think that's fine you could i mean it's this is all opinion you can you can think about that however you will um and you might think you know they're not professional programmers why should they get paid um professional wages but the way i look at that is omeda is not a professional company like like they're a startup company they're a startup indie company so i think the the startup indie programmers that they have should probably get paid about the same that any normal programmer would get paid but um that's their side of the story i already told you made above side of the story so you guys have any thoughts on on, on the gossip here on the on the gossip corner um jack well you can go right ahead if you'd like to <laughs> uh well from where i see it yeah it's pretty fair that they left they chose to leave because of money. It's completely understandable. Programmers nowadays get paid quite a lump sum. But I could also see from Metabuff's side, they could have also eventually gave them more money or whatever, more shares, et cetera, when the company actually started up and left uh, whatever alpha you want to call it. Um, I, 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 I could see it from both sides. Um, but yeah, like you said, Mongoose, it could be from greed, it could be from anything. But I mean, to... I, 
was it really uh, like a like a full time job position thing that they were all working on, or what? Like, was it all a bunch of like seventeen year olds working on it? Like, uh, what was the story? Well, there? I mean, Arsenic um, just graduated with a computer science degree, and uh, he was kind okay. of uh, he was kind of getting in there, tr originally kind of looking at it as like an internship, but they didn't have anybody else, so he ended up being the lead programmer and kind of learning as he went. And um, uh, no matter how you put it, they put a lot of work into the game. Um, like all the all the programming that's been done for Core has been done by them. I mean, there was there was a team before them that also got let go. Um, I'm not sure what the circumstances were there, but I mean, a lot of that is due to their their hard work. And I, I can see that they wanted fair compensation. Um, I can also see maybe side for of it that they just don't want somebody running over them and <clears throat> taking the company away from them. You know, but whatever. It's uh, it's over and done with and. It looks like there's no major uh, impact to the production of core. So, yep, that's it's the main thing. Strong, there, I think. It's, it's all good. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely a tricky situation because um, I didn't really even think about it until Jackal mentioned it. You know, seeing both sides of of the story, um, that Metabuff maybe would have been able to to offer more down the line. You know, who's who's to say? Who's to know? Um, but it's definitely fair to want compensation that is, um, you know, equivalent to what you're, you want to get back what you're putting in to yeah. a project. So it's tough, but like you said, it's over, it's done with, they are saying that it didn't hurt the progress. So that's good. That's good. If that's what they um, are telling us, then, um, we'll just kind of see where they can go and, and wish them the best from here on out. Yep, and hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody everybody can move on from this. Hopefully, those programmers can can move on and maybe find themselves a, a different job somewhere else, and uh, and core can move on and make their game, and we can all just forget about this. <laughs> yeah, maybe everybody can benefit from it in some way or another. They got some experience, maybe something they can put on a resume or something. You know, um, so yeah, we'll from see. the sounds of it, they're not going to want to put made a buff on their resume. <laughs> 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 Let's move on now yeah. to uh, Omega Studios and predecessor. Uh, Smokey's been. They, they, Smokey said the item shop tests have been going well, and they've been working on the jungle buff camps. Um, he said the red camp went um, went really good, but the blue camp he was having a little bit of troubles with. Um, I didn't get to see the stream. Jackal, you watched the stream where he was working on the blue buff, and he said he said it was working out, right? Yeah, he, uh, he had the buff on, uh, working, the buff transferred over to the player properly. He got the HP to work and the damage uh, dealt to work, but he didn't get the, the uh, I think he didn't get the damage from the mob working correctly yet. Oh, okay. Progress, though. Progress. And that that's good progress, because in the alpha, there were no jungle buffs at all. And actually, the jungle minions gave as much xp and gold as a lane minion so it was kind of useless to even go into oh, yeah. the jungle at all during the alpha so uh that's good to see from them it's good to see that they're not only fixing the old problems that they had that they identified in the alpha but they're also implementing new things going forward uh, mandy i know predecessor is your baby what do you think um i am pretty impressed with the amount of um, work he got done on that stream because he's always kind of said that the streams are, you know, to let the communities go know how things are going and, and also for him to spend some time with his community and everything like that, but not a whole lot of work can actually get done. You know, he's trying to interact with the chat and answer questions and blah, blah, blah. So I think that's an impressive amount of work to get done on a stream. Um, like he said, he gets a lot more work done off stream. So I think it's good to, it's a good gauge of hopefully um, the progress that they're making. And I'm excited. They seem to yeah, be picking up pace, right? Like, yeah, they seem to be getting faster and faster with this. Like, yeah, you, you can really tell it. Uh, he's really passionate about it too, because uh, connecting oh, yeah. community is a big thing uh, for startup games. And if he's that, that into it and that into the community and everybody uh, like getting into it, then it's pretty much amping up for success. Yeah. I imagine you probably like uh, Smokey because he looks like Gideon. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I look like Gideon too. If, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably the Canadian thing. <laughs> Canadian oh, that's what it is. Look like all... Gideon was the Canadian all... character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He should have had a big maple leaf that dropped dollops well, of syrup down on top of people. <laughs> Confirmed Canadian team for esports. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, Canadian Gideon. I love it. 
<laughs> Let's move on to Undying Games with Ethereal. We I had some big stuff planned with them, but uh, um, the scheduling didn't quite work out. We'll try and get to you uh, next week. So if you have any questions um, for the Undying team, go ahead and hit me up in the comments. And uh, whenever I do what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep that a secret. But uh, whenever I do that, I'll, I'll hit them up and ask them. But um, we're just going to talk about Ethereal a little bit in general. Um, you know, they released Marina last week. The Marina's voice actress was in their Discord chat the other day. I, I was out on the road, so I didn't get to ask her any questions. I wanted to ask her some stuff about voice acting. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a cool place to hang out, their Discord. And uh, um, I think that's about it. Jackal, you want to talk about their item system that they, that they released the other day, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, there was uh, like quite a hypothetical. Quite a few hypothetical things I thought could, you know, happen. Because all we've seen is up to tier three, right? I mean, is it possible that they could do beyond that? They could do tier four, tier five, or even maybe they stop at tier three. But some of the early game items have like a quest feature or something that you mm -hmm. go and do in the game to maybe help you out in the early game if you're not that far ahead to maybe get your team back and rolling into the game instead of just having an unfair advantage just because you died once or twice right in the early game. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things they could do with it, um, but from what I've seen, it's, the items are really nice. Uh, <laughs> I just can't wait to play it. <laughs> I suppose anything's possible. I mean, the, they've certainly illustrated that with their game design. So they could, it could go beyond the, the tier three items. And um, I kind of don't know either if like the, if it's going to be the traditional way of a tier one transforms into a tier two, which transforms into a tier three. I think that's what it's going to be. But yeah, mix and match. Yeah, never know. You never know. Um, I guess another thing would be uh, they still haven't announced the overseer class or anybody that's in it. I I was kind of hoping that uh, Marina was going to be um the overseer for some reason. Oh really? <laughs> no, I, I knew she was going to be a support. <laughs> no, they're not going to release anything, any information about the overseer class until after the alpha. The uh, overseer is not going to be in the uh, alpha test. Uh, it's just too complicated of a thing to to test out. Like um, like we've mentioned on the show before, you need to start out with fairly basic heroes and an and an alpha to just get a baseline before you start adding in the more complex revenant and like phase and Quang style <laughs> heroes. So yeah, first we need the shinbies. What's that? <laughs> first we need the shinbies. You no. Know, I, I watched you. I saw you earlier typing about my shinbi. You need to leave my <laughs> shinbi alone. <laughs> okay, Wukong. Okay, let's move on to uh, Phoenix Rising. They had nothing this week. Um, just if you guys are uh, interested in learning anything more about any of these games, I'll have uh, a bunch of their social medias linked in the uh, description below. You can check them out there. I enc highly encourage you to do so and do the, uh, the research on your own. Um, also, people don't seem to believe me, but if you want to come host the show with us, all you got to do is ask me. <laughs> so uh, a lot of people after that video I did this week were like, oh, you, you let just people that are just fans of Paragon on host the show? Like, yeah, that's vast majority of the people that we have on here are just fans of Paragon like Jackal that just want to <laughs> bullshit yep. about Paragon because we refuse to let the game die. So yeah, hit me up, man. <laughs> And uh, let's move right along to the poll results for this week. Um, very different than what it used to be. Um, I've, I've only been doing this, you know, by the month. But uh, Core is at 30%, Predecessors at 21%, Ethereal at 46%, Whoa. Phoenix Rising at 3%. They 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 jumped out of their little 2%. They was always at 2%, and they jumped to 3%. I'm so proud of them. So proud uh, of Ethereal Phoenix Rising. Just came up and took the lead yeah they, they did items yeah they did a lot of people lost um a lot of <laughs> faith in core not just not just because of the 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 shenanigans that have been going on but just in general people have been losing a lot of faith in core um yeah that's one of the reasons thing. i did that video i think that people were imagining stuff that was far worse than what it actually was so I, yeah. and i kind of wanted them to come out and just tell the community that yay we had some programmers leave so things are slow but they didn't so i said fuck it i'm gonna tell everybody <laughs> and i did so uh I actually i kind of expected predecessor to be above core but uh predecessor is definitely higher than they used to be but uh they're working their way <laughs> yeah they're, they're working their way up but ethereal for now has taken the lead that is a that is a first in hype poll history that Ethereal has taken the lead. I wonder why Phoenix Rising went up a little bit. 
I'm happy about it, but I don't know why. You guys got any theories? Uh, maybe maybe they got their uh, their entire team of devs to all put it <laughs> onto Phoenix. <laughs> Not, not. Maybe, um, people are listening to what we say about, you know, just because um, they're not pumping out the updates weekly doesn't mean they're not working hard. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah for maybe all we know, if... they're, they're like a week out from releasing Alpha. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. to say, right? I know they're. I know. I know for a fact they're not a week out from releasing <laughs> Alpha. Right. Well, every However, week to me, they, they're one week away. They are. They are. They they <laughs> they've progressed well beyond what we saw in the past, and it's going to be awesome whenever they uh, they finally deign to release some information. But um, let's move on now to the highlight reel for this week. Um, had a couple of highlights for you. Uh, Quam Bomb returning, if you remember him from the uh, Twin Blast episode. But anyway, let's take a look at the highlights. First clip we have here is from Quam Bomb highlighting the effectiveness of the old Raging Bull card. If you don't know what that is. In Legacy, Raging Bull will give you a stacking movement speed buff. You see the blue around her feet there. Upon minion kill, and uh, it was it was a growth order affinity card. It worked very well in Sparrow. Rampage jumps into the fray. Steel comes in with that big ultimate. Trying to get out of there now because they are taking a lot of damage. Sparrow has that uh, black buff. She wisely decides to ignore Steel and go after Iggy, but Steel comes into her line of sight anyway while she's channeling the inner fire going to take out that Iggy pretty easily. Look how fast she's moving here with all of these kills and the, uh, I believe, hero kills counted as well, but she's going to continue stacking that Raging Bull card up, taking out some minions, clearing out these minion waves, trying to make a push on this tower. Enemy Team Sparrow's kind of creeping up, seeing what she can do, but she doesn't see the movement speed on Sparrow. She gets bum rushed missing a few shots here but that's okay big boy rampage coming in with a stone to secure that kill look how fast she's going this next clip is from zeus wolf not the flashiest play ever but it does highlight how everything pulled together in paragon to create such a great sort of visceral experience the animations and the sound design and everything he's playing my big boy rick here you probably see what's coming bam that hook into the ultimate while she's taking tower shots. She's gonna scream in her face, but it doesn't matter. He slaps that bitch down. Great Richter play right there. And just, oh, oh God, that's, that, this highlight just makes me miss Paragon so much. Final clip from the old Prodigy playing Countess. And that Morgesh is way too far out. Countess wants that booty and she's gonna get that booty. She is zeroed in. Is she going to get her huge Dark Tide? Damn near a triple kill with one Dark Tide. That was amazing amount of damage. Now Zinx, the ever so tanky Zinx, is trying to get away. She's in the middle of a lot of uh, damage here. Takes out the Zinx with another Dark Tide. Oh, she lost the monkey. She lost the monkey. Where the monkey? He's right in front of her. Oh, this is close. She's taking hits from the doppelganger, but she survives and gets away with a pentakill. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the highlight reel for this week. So we're going to move in for the topic for discussion for this week. And it's something I keep seeing pop up over and over. And that's uh, other uses for the Paragon assets other than a MOBA. We talked, we hit on it a little bit last week, but um, I've seen a few things. I've seen the, the auto chest for Paragon. I've seen Frisbee golf with Paragon. And then Trollface, of course, in my Discord is working on kind of a uh, an action game with the Paragon assets and uh I'm definitely gonna gonna nail down a time that I could talk to him about that game and um I'll do maybe a little video for that just in the next for the minions and you can check that out because it's pretty cool. It seems like he's using Sereth as his main hero. And um but yeah uh so other uses for the Paragon assets what do you guys think? What do you do you think do you think you would play a game just because it had Paragon heroes? Or uh what what kind of ideas do you have for some for some games that you can use the Paragon Heroes in. What do you guys think? Um, I don't know that I would play a game just because it had the Paragon Heroes in it. Um, I would probably be intrigued to see how they were used, uh, but I don't know that I would, you know, like stick with it. But I see, you know, here on our little show notes, um, I'm assuming, Jackal, this was you that put down some of these suggestions, like the MMORPG, or was that you, Goose? 
No, that was that was me. Yeah, was oh, Zappa. okay. I was gonna say yeah. I love that idea because I love me a good MMORPG. So I think it'd be really cool to have the Paragon heroes in there, and um, you know, get to kind of maybe even customize them a little bit more because MMORPGs do usually have a little bit more custom uh, character customization options. So I think that would be really cool. I would love that. Um, and I also love the uh, suggestion of an Avenger style game where you get to kind of like use a different hero for um, a, whatever type of mission you might be doing in said game. So those are some really cool suggestions. I'll let you talk about them instead of me talking about <laughs> your suggestions. Well, but those okay are the ones then. that I like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's okay to voice your, your opinion what you think. Uh... Of what I have here. So, um, <laughs> uh, I had another one, uh, Diablo style game. I guess it's kind of like an MMO, but it's not. Uh, it's not so much open world, but you know, you just kind of go around, you collect items, kill monsters, mm -hmm. all that stuff. I mean, you could, I don't know, throw in Sparrow as regular old archer and get bow upgrades and etc. and all mm -hmm. that stuff. You could use the cards um, as upgrades, sort of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not too. Abilities. Yeah. I'm not too sure what uh, auto chess is, but is is it kind of like team fight, like team uh, TFT or? Yeah, it's, team, it's exactly like TFT. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Then I guess that one's already covered. I just kind of wrote it down because uh, I wasn't sure what auto chess was. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, the fact that somebody's already done it, it's pretty good. I mean, I'm sure it's, it has a long way to go, and there's a lot of stuff that you can do with it, and a lot of different heroes. Yeah. I'm sure they probably used all the heroes and stuff, but. I mean, I mean those, those assets are free. People might as well pick them up and use them. They're beautiful assets, yeah. and yeah. Like, if, I, if I knew how to use them, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right on that train. It kind of comes down to uh, the question I asked, which is, did you love the game or did you love the heroes? And uh, a lot of people said both. <laughs> you can't pick both. You got to pick well, one. Well, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, uh, I pick things that are familiar. So I've never mm -hmm. played auto chess, but I think I would now because TFT came out for League. Mm -hmm. And I've never played auto chess until uh, that came out, and I, I don't know why I actually find it fun. But it's fun, but I don't actually enjoy playing League anymore. So it's it's just something that's familiar to me, <laughs> yeah. um, but it's still uh, something new. So familiar and new is, is like a good combination. Yeah, that's uh, a really good point. Yeah, so not so much that I like the Paragon Assets that I would play it. It's uh, just like, if it was a style of game I would play... I would play it, but if it was something as familiar to me, I'd still give it a try. Yeah, like Mandy said, she would be intrigued. I would be intrigued too. Like the the frisbee golf, like I would play. That. I would <laughs> I'd toss some frisbee with, discs. with Richter. <laughs> give me yeah. some Gideon discs. Let's go. Play, yeah, some Gideon discs. Gideon would be so <laughs> good at it. <laughs> you ever played frisbee golf? Like real frisbee golf? No, oh, I wish I had topic. Though. It's so fun, but just like everything, you got overly competitive assholes that play that have like sets of different frisbees for each oh hole my gosh. and like they get all, all uptight about the rules like motherfucker just throw the frisbee at the goddamn chain thing <laughs> nobody <laughs> cares but yeah I mean, um i kind of like the idea of a diablo style game because I, I, I love diablo but oh yeah i never played avengers so i have no idea about that an mmo that would be pretty tough i think that would take a that would take a lot of development yeah, to do. yeah it would it's i mean mmos are all based on lore right there's a lot of lore behind uh, older dlc and stuff so i mean look at world of warcraft or what what is it almost 20 years deep and um they're still going i mean i'm sure their player base has dropped off a little bit because there's more games to play <laughs> yeah <laughs> different cool. things to do now instead of just wow it's the fucking I mean, titan that's never going to go down though yeah i mean mm. uh, we'll see um yeah but i mean also they used uh, some of the paragon assets but ideas for fortnite skins i thought that was kind of rude but you know <laughs> it was a they just spit right in our faces with that didn't they <laughs> that's that's pretty much when i stopped playing fortnite <laughs> It's like the last what one I saw was that skin. was the was the revenant skin. Did they put a Gideon skin in too? Ugh. Yeah, it was it was like the overseer or something, <laughs> some weird thing that they did. And I was like, they made Gideon a girl, and not not that there's anything wrong, but I mean, if they would just put Gideon right in, I would have been fine with that. I saw that it was the rev. It was the I forget what the the dark crow revenant or some whatever the fuck it was. Called. Yeah, I don't know what it was yeah, called. But I saw yeah. that as a, as a Fortnite skin. I was like, you mother. <laughs> they're just so dabbing us over and over again <laughs> but yeah oh well <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard some people say something about a uh paragon battle royale before too but 
nope. I thought about that writing that, oh. but I was like, um, I would nope right it's already the been fuck done out of that. Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, did you guys have any uh, anything else to say on the uh, on the topic? I think I'm good. I think I think I'm uh, I'm okay for now. I'll Speak be back eventually. Now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> or two months from now. <laughs> Let's move on to plugs, Jackal. What do you got to plug, brother? Uh, I just got my, I guess, YouTube. Uh, I only have really one video clip on there of Gideon gameplay because, uh, you know, I, I don't know why I just never recorded more. But uh, there's a nice video up there you can watch. Uh, it's pretty. I don't, I don't know if you call it entertaining, but uh, <laughs> you're welcome to go check that out. Or some of my other cringy videos that I have on there, like me uh, having multiple, like multiple personalities in an Arma Two video. It's uh, it was funny. I don't know. <laughs> all right i'll check it out <laughs> mandy what do you got to plug uh same old same old i just been streaming streaming yeah if you guys haven't checked out mandy's stream <clears throat> go check it out she is uh incredibly engaging she's fun to watch and um like she's got her chat hat thing the chat hat is <laughs> my favorite part of your stream she just has different um conversation cho- topics that she'll pull out of a hat and everybody will discuss them so yeah go go check mandy out go 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 drop her a follow oh thanks You're welcome <laughs> that'll be twenty dollars yeah <laughs> twenty dollars for chat yeah huh? we discussed previously for him to say that <laughs> <laughs> you know i would never say anything good about mandy <laughs> but i got nothing to plug so uh so let's let's uh let's end it with another with another um with another question for the community I want to know, who do you think would win in a fist fight between Morgesh and the Fae? No magic, just throwing hands, just throwing fists. Fae can use her wings, Morgesh can use her horns. I want to know, what do you, what do you guys say right now? Jack, what do you, who do you, who do you think would win? Sounds like they're using sticks to hit each other with. No, not <laughs> sticks. They're both in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just the, well, maybe they can pick up sticks. It's a bar fight. Bar rules. Have you, street, have street you seen rules. their arms? <laughs> street rules. Who do you think would win, Jackal? Ah, uh, Fae. Mandy. Morgesh. <laughs> I love me the Fae, but I think in a down and dirty bar fight, I think Morgesh would pull it out. Oh, Let me know yeah. in the comments below what you guys think. But for now, this is the For the Minions crew signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoo!